All right, Lone Star Gunners, welcome to the podcast. This is Lone Star Gun Talk, the official podcast of Lone Star Gun Rights. And I am your host, as always, Derek Wills, and I'm very humbled to be here. Uh, let me know in the comments where you're watching from. Um, today, we are going to talk about our lawsuit that we have filed uh, in federal court against House Speaker Dennis Bonin. Um, some people have actually come to his defense already. Um, not surprisingly, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and we're going to kind of go into why we are why we filed this case uh as well as what legal precedents have been set uh so far and what we hope to get out of this case um this is not some quick get rich quick scheme or anything like that uh this is a serious matter that we are taking very seriously uh and Dennis Bonin should know that what he is doing is absolutely wrong it violates the constitution of the united states uh and uh, that his actions are incredibly inappropriate um so we're going to kind of break this down just a little bit uh the first case that we really dug into whenever we started researching for this is uh knight institute versus trump and this is the infamous trump twitter case where uh president trump was uh, was sued for blocking people on his personal Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. That's the handle. Um, and people were saying that uh, that that violated the First Amendment. Uh, just going through some of your comments here, Jerry. Uh, just to answer your question, Texas does not do recalls, uh, so the only way to get Dennis Bonin out of office is to beat him in the primaries next year. Um, also, with our session being only every other year and lasting only 140 days, if we did have a recall, it wouldn't get anywhere near what, you know, it, it wouldn't get any momentum by the time the session is even over before uh, before it could actually do anything meaningful. So uh, that that's to answer your question. Uh, anyway, going back to this case, the uh, Knight Institute v. Uh, Donald Trump. I'm going to go here to page 43. And this is a very long opinion, uh, but there are some things that I want to highlight here. And this one in particular. It says, Though Twitter also maintains control over the at real Donald Trump account and all other Twitter accounts, we nonetheless conclude that the extent to which the president and Scavino, who is somebody that has access to post on the behalf of the president on his Twitter account, can and do exercise control over aspects of the at real Donald Trump account are sufficient to establish the government control element as to the contents of the tweets sent by the at real Donald Trump account, the timeline compiling those tweets and the interactive space associated with each of those tweets. So basically what they are saying here is that even though Twitter owns the servers and Twitter actually owns the account of at real Donald Trump and can control it uh, because he uses it in a government controlled manner, meaning he operates it as president, not as Donald Trump. That establishes government control as established by other legal precedents that have come before. And they cite those throughout. Um, anyway, let me get back to this. And I'm going to go skip around here, so you'll have to pardon me. This is page 49. Uh, here it says, Rather because the president and Scavino use the at real Donald Trump account for governmental functions, the control they exercise over it is accordingly government in nature. Again, backing up what they said earlier, that regardless of how old the account is and who technically has total control over it, meaning uh, meaning Twitter, uh, it doesn't matter. And I, I just realized that uh, y'all can't see what I'm highlighting here. So this is this sentence right here uh, that I just read. And this is on page uh, 49 through 50. So if, you, if I'm going to link all of these if you're listening on the audio-only podcast version uh, on iTunes or Google Play. 
I'm going to link all of these in in the show notes so you can follow along and read it for yourself. Uh, I would actually recommend reading the entire thing because it does say quite a lot about what it, why they ruled the way they did in saying that uh, the president operating his personal Twitter account cannot block people from his Twitter page. Uh, and it, it has to do with the fact that he is using it as president and not as Donald Trump. So that establishes some of that. And there's one other thing that I want to kind of highlight here in this case. Uh, and this is going to page 63. And it says here, individual plaintiffs were indis uh, indis indis uh, indisputably, English is hard, sorry, blocked as a result of viewpoint discrimination. The record establishes that shortly after the individual plaintiffs posted the tweets in which they criticized the president for his policies, the president blocked each of those individual plaintiffs. And defendants do not contest the plaintiff's allegation that the individual plaintiffs were blocked from the president's Twitter. Um... The, uh, the continued exclusion of the individual pa plaintiffs based on viewpoint is therefore permissible, impermissible, sorry, under the First Amendment. Again, going back to what I was saying earlier that because it is government controlled and, and the court established that it is government controlled at that point, that is why uh, the court ruled that the president cannot block people from his personal Twitter account. Now, here's the thing, this, and this is important to uh, this is important to establish. If every official communication from the president came only from the at White House Twitter handle, and the only thing that Donald Trump ever tweeted out on his real Donald Trump account was personal things like, "Hey, I'm you know." Uh, I'm here in the Oval Office with the First Lady, and we're having a good time. Uh, here's a picture of what I'm eating. Basically, if he were to use that only as every other person uses it, and he blocked people, the court would not have found ruled this way. They would have said, well, this is his personal account. He is using it in a personal manner, and therefore he has the right to ban whoever he wants. But because he is using it to issue official statements by the president, he is using it as president, uh, in his official capacity, then that establishes the, the whole government control aspect of that. There's another case that we are, that we looked into before we filed. And this one actually comes out of the state of Texas. Uh, it's, a, it's another case that went to federal court. It went to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. And this uh, is Deanna Robinson versus the the Hunt County Sheriff's Department uh, Sheriff's Office. This is an interesting case because it has specifically to do with Facebook. And the complaint was that Deanna Robinson sued the Hunt County Sheriff's Office because they blocked her on their Facebook page. This sounds very familiar to what Dennis Bonin is doing. Uh, by the way, guys, if you have any questions and you want to chime in, please feel free to do so. I see we got some people from uh, Cold Springs, Nevada. Wow. Uh, San Antonio, Rio Grande Valley, um, Edgewood, New Mexico. Uh, it's so great to have all of y'all here. Uh, Bossier City, Louisiana. Uh, Joplin, Missouri. I'm so glad to see y'all all here. Uh, this is a very important show, so stay tuned. This is, uh, this is some good stuff. Okay, so Deanna Robinson is a woman that was blocked from the Harris County Sheriff's Office Facebook page. And this was labeled as an official Facebook page. Uh, according to the, the ruling from the Fifth Circuit, during the per time period relevant to this litigation, the About section of the HCSO Facebook page stated, Welcome to the official Hunt County Sheriff's Office Facebook page. We welcome your input and positive comments regarding the Hunt County Sheriff's Office. It further, further stated, the purpose of this site is to present matters of public interest within Hunt County, Texas. We encourage you to submit comments, but please note that this is not a public forum. That is what they said in their about section. And this is something that kind of caught our eye because they, have, they proclaimed before all of this went down 
that this is not a public forum. So it was it was interesting to read the rest of this and how the court came to conclude that despite what they say, it still is a public forum. Uh, on January 18th, 2017, the HCSO Facebook account posted this message. We find it suspicious that the day after a North Texas police officer is murdered, we have received several anti-police calls in the office as well as people trying to degrade and insult police officers on this page. Any post filled with foul language, hate speech uh, of all types, and comments that are considered inappropriate will be removed and the user banned. There are a lot of families on this page and it is for everyone and therefore we monitor ex extremely closely. Thank you for your understanding. Well, despite that warning, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that that's not appropriate because, uh, kind of going back to the uh, the Trump case, they're using it in their official capacity. They even say it's the official page. Um, so I'm just going to kind of skip through here. Uh, going to page six. It says here, As a threshold matter, Mo Robinson must plead a constitutional violation. The complaint alleges that the defendants deleted Robinson's Facebook comment and banned her from the HCSO Facebook page on the basis of her viewpoint. Robinson contends that the defendants' actions constitute viewpoint discrimination, regardless of whether they were motivated by her criticisms of the sheriff's office or a determination that her comment was otherwise, quote, inappropriate. We agree. And this is quoting another case, Street v. New York from 1969. It is firmly settled that under our Constitution, the public expression of ideas may not be prohibited merely because the ideas are themselves offensive to some of their hearers. And uh, that is something that, uh, that we're try we, want to, we want to highlight because we weren't actually being inappropriate. We weren't being offensive. Uh, the vast majority of people who have been banned we're just leaving very minor criticisms against the speaker, mainly calling for him to uh, to prioritize constitutional carry. Uh, some people might have used curse words. Some people might have said some things that might be deemed inappropriate by some of us, but the First Amendment doesn't isn't subjective to whether or not speech is offensive. In fact, most would argue, and myself included, that the speech that needs the most protection is the speech that is deemed the most offensive. Because you don't need to protect speech that everyone agrees with or finds uh, appropriate. People need to understand that what, what people do whenever they are voicing their concerns, they are, they are uh, re trying to get their government officials to understand their viewpoint. Sometimes they might not articulate it the best way. Sometimes they might believe, or, or sometimes they might, might not think about what it is that they're saying and how it comes across. And sometimes they just might be so overwhelmingly angry at the situation that they fly off the handle and they leave a comment that is that, that would make their grandmother blush. It, it, it would be what we would all consider to be offensive. But that does not grant the government the right to silence that opinion. That does not grant the government the authority to silence that individual. People need to... to uh, when I say people, I'm talking about those that run Dennis Bonin's Facebook page. Calling for the priority of a, of a bill that is that would advance our natural right to bear arms, that you claim to, uh, that you claim to defend... Silencing those critics is not appropriate. You do not have the authority to do that. Now, news broke a few weeks back where he was saying that he's received several death threats. Uh, these weren't on his page. I read every article that I could find where they would cite some of these death threats and they would post screenshots. These were people that were replying to our Facebook page, uh, to our Facebook posts, and we're doing so in an indirect manner, and we're doing so by voicing their frustrations. Yeah, they were saying some things that weren't exactly how do you how, how how what's the best word for this? weren't exactly 
positive towards the speaker. Uh, one of them that kept gets getting cited over and over and over again by several news outlets was that he w- people were saying, hang him high or remember what happens to, tr- you know, to traitors and things like that. Those aren't death threats. A death threat would be like, and for the record, this is me using an example, not actually saying that this is how I feel and this, this is not me issuing a threat for the record. I want the record to clearly establish this. But an example of a death threat to uh, any elected official would be, I am going to kill you. A- an example of a death threat would be, I am going to um, come into your house and cause harm to your you and your family. You know who receives death threats on a regular basis? Open Carry Texas founder C.J. Grisham. He receives legitimate death threats, some that are mailed to his house, some of which say, I am going to rape your daughter and wife to see if they have the capability to defend themselves. Some people are really sick and twisted, and other people are merely frustrated. No, we do not endorse the comments that people make whenever they say, we need to hang him high like the traitor that he is. But we understand it. It is a rhetorical comment that is people voicing frustration. It's not a death threat. So, And because that wasn't posted on his page, uh, that sort of angle for defense would, would likely not uh, not have standing, but anyway, I digress. Let me get back to this other case here uh, that I am uh, that I am going through. Okay, so on page seven here, let's see. Robinson further contends that the HCSO Facebook page is an analogous to an interactive public meeting and is therefore designated public forum, or at least a limited public forum subject to First Amendment scrutiny, and it cites another case. Hunt County offers no argument that the Facebook page is not a public or limited public forum, nor did the district court address the issue. We therefore assume that for purposes of this case that the HCSO uh, Facebook page is a forum subject to First Amendment protection. Because uh, Robinson alleges viewpoint discrimination, it is immaterial whether the Facebook page is analyzed as a limited or designated public forum. Uh, and then finally, going down here to page 13, uh, this is something that uh, this is something that I, I found quite interesting. Uh, this is talking about the initial denial of her uh, her injunction. Oh, it's page 14. My apologies. Uh, Robinson has not challenged. Facebook's right to enforce its own policies. Rather, her position is that it is the government itself that is attempting in this case to decide whether the relevant audience would find the speech offensive. A private policy cannot authorize a state actor to engage in conduct that violates the Constitution. That is a very, very profound statement and something that um something that I think needs to be highlighted. Uh, I'm just checking your comments in here. Uh wow, we got people from Georgia as well. Uh Misty says, hold up, warlike and hostile is just a way to wipe the timetable off the mark. Uh Michelle Waters says that she's here. Hi Michelle, how are you? Uh Jason Ray Davis, that's a standard to go to. Death threats. They all use it to be honest. Uh, and he is absolutely right. Um, okay, so now let's get to our case. Our case is is one that is very similar. And what I have here for you is the copy of the complaint that we filed. And this is Lone Star Gun Rights, Justin Delosh, and Jason Davis uh, versus Representative De- Dennis Bonin. Um, the jurisdiction that we filed in is in U.S. federal court. 
because of the fact that this is a federal matter. Uh, the First Amendment guarantees the right to free speech, and the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution mandates that all of the rights protected by the uh, U.S. Constitution are also protected at the state level. Uh, excuse me. So, we have filed it in uh, in federal court, and here are the three plaintiffs. Lone Star Gun Rights is a pro-gun advocacy organization in the state of Texas. That is us. Plaintiff Justin Delosh is an adult res resident and is an agent of Lone Star Gun Rights. He has taken up uh, an individual status in this case as well. And plaintiff Jason Davis is an adult resident in Brazoria County and is a constituent of Representative Dennis Bonin. Um... So a lot of this is establishing the complaint that uh, that basically we've all been been banned by a lot of people. We talk about uh, the surveys that we send out to all of our uh, all of the people that are running as a Republican in the primary season, um, and we even attach one of those. In fact, Justin was banned because of the fact that he sent them a message uh, a couple of years ago that, hey, I'm following up on my survey. I know that you found it, and uh, I know that you have it because you signed for it, and I want to get it back, and they, uh, they banned him for that. Okay, good, getting back to this. Uh, LSGR's Facebook page was reviewed approximately 12 million people uh, per month during the last election cycle in Texas, over the last several months before the filing a complaint, approximately 2 billion people per month access the LSGR page. Um, let's see here. It's setting up what Facebook does. Whenever we file this, we have to basically use... to. We have to explain what Facebook is and how it works as if somebody had never uh, even heard of it before. Uh, so here we're just establishing what it takes to get a a profile, um, what it how a profile works, blah blah blah. We use a an example. A user may post a photograph of their newborn baby, and their friends can comment on the photograph about how, how cute the baby is, and or like or love the photograph to show their approval. Uh, but then we go in, and we talk about pages. Frequently, businesses and elected officials will create an entirely public Facebook account to advertise their business and products or communicate with constituents. Facebook offers Facebook pages that are unique from the aforementioned private profiles. Facebook pages are for businesses, brands, organizations, and public figures to share their stories and connect with people. Like profiles, pages can be customized with stories and events and more. People who like or follow the page can get updates in the page's news feed. Unlike profiles, pages are entirely public whether a Facebook user likes or follows the page, and page follows are not approved by moderators or administrators. And then we go into what he did, what our complaint against him is. Uh, I go in and, uh, let's see, uh, I'm going to try and skip through a lot of this. Uh, this is... Um, uh, Justin's getting blocked uh, and here is here is one specific that has to do with me on or about April 2nd after I commented about prioritizing constitutional carry I discovered that my access had changed before the comment about constitutional carry I could symbolically express my approval as well as comment or reply I could repost blah 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 after April 2nd my, con my access changed to where I could only share. Uh, because I'm an administrator for the LSGR Facebook page, I am unwilling to do the same as Lone Star Gun Rights. Um, nothing was uh, profane, indecent, insulting, harassing, or offensive, or threatening, uh, but ultimately that doesn't matter, even though it is a true statement that it wasn't. And also, uh, Jason who is the other plaintiff who is a constituent of Dennis Bonin, uh, blocked him for completely unrelated reasons. He wasn't calling uh, about constitutional carry, what got him blocked. He was voicing concerns about property taxes, equal parenting laws, and child support laws. And the speaker banned him. Uh, let me go back and do a quick check of here. 
uh, the comments. Okay. Um, so here's what we're suing for. We are suing, going down here to relief. A lot of people think that this is a money grab. This is just a way to harass him or whatever. Uh, that is not what this case is about. We are seeking a declaratory relief, which basically means that the court rules, yes, LSGR and the other plaintiffs are correct in this filing, and therefore uh, Dennis Bonin was wrong. We are seeking injunctive relief, which basically means that the court will order Dennis Bonin to unblock everybody that he has blocked and pre prevent him from... Uh, prevent him from blocking anybody else in the future or deleting comments and then the only other thing that we're seeking reasonable cost expenses and attorney's fees that's it uh this all other is something that is um standard for every suit so that that is the case in a nutshell and uh wow spent 30 minutes on this i uh, I uh, I apologize. I know that that was kind of dry, but that is exactly why th this this is very important. Uh, we can't we cannot allow Dennis Bonin or any elected official. I don't care if it's the president to silence people based on uh, criticism. We have a we have a right to redress grievances against our government and our government officials specifically. If he doesn't allow us to get a meeting with him he doesn't allow us to voice our concerns then he only has his yes men around and if you go to his page right now you will find very few comments that are critical of him if you comb through it you will find very few comments that are critical of him in any way i have seen comments that were very minorly critical that ended up getting disappeared that ended up disappearing so here's the thing I, here's what i need all of you to do Go to Dennis Bonin's Facebook page. If you have the ability to like, comment, and share, then you're fine. If you can only share, then I need you to shoot us a private message on Facebook, or you can email me at Derek, that's D-E-R-E-K, at LoneStarGR.com. I need you to email me your, uh, uh, your mailing address, email address, and phone number, and we will add you to our petition. Uh, this is not going to add you as a plaintiff, but this is going to show a pattern of behavior. We already have a very long list. I want this list to be as long as humanly possible. If you've been blocked by him and you want to be added to our petition, email me all of those things. Again, email address, mailing address, and phone number. And uh, if, if, you're, um, if your Facebook name is different than your legal name, uh, shoot me, shoot me that as well. Not if you if you go by John, but your legal name's Jonathan. That doesn't matter. But if it's like uh, my name's Bear, and your real name's Bill, that's what I, what I would need. Um, also, you could be called to testify. This is another thing that that is important. Uh, so if you're not comfortable testifying, you don't want to to be part of it. That is fine. We're not going to hold it against you. It's just to make you aware that you, there could be a point at which you would be called to testify. Um, it's not a guarantee. Uh, you could this entire case could go through the the uh, the whole thing, and you could never be called. Uh, but I just want to make sure that you know that there is a possibility that you could be called to testify. Also, lawsuits aren't exactly uh, free. If you could. If you are not a paid member of Lone Star Gun Rights, please go to lsgr.live and sign up. Uh, we would really appreciate helping kind of alleviate the, the burden that we are uh, going through. Uh, but I will tell you that we are going to keep doing what we do uh, and fight as hard as we can. But your membership will definitely be incredibly valuable to, to our fight. Uh, so if you could, please go to lsgr.live uh, and click the join and sign up for just $6 a month or you can pay for the entire year for $60. We would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for me, guys. Uh, until next Sunday, arm yourself with knowledge and share the ammo.